Hi everyone, Sandman here. This video is brought to you by a donation from Meow Meow, better known as Fat Cat. That's what Miss Fat Cat wants to be known as through her new Asian name. Well, not really, but I thought you guys would enjoy that. Anyways, here's what her Meownificence has to say. Hi Sandman, I told you about the girl I threw over the financial cliff. I hadn't seen her in about 14 months, and I hadn't spoken to her in over 7 months, and since I never got a response for wishing her a Happy New Year, I figured that she didn't want to talk to me and unfriended her from Facebook mid-March because I figured that would be the best. It always bothered me as to how she talked about money. I'll make it short. She's mad for not being as rich as she should have been because her father has to pay alimony to his ex-wife and son. She keeps pretending like she doesn't care because she wants to look like a good person. I was introduced as her handicapped friend from her now ex. I wonder if this is going to be the thing with girls from a second family. I ran into her this weekend while I was actually shopping with my fiancé. She told me she's been back since February despite her Facebook page still saying she lives overseas. I don't know who she's avoiding, but I don't think it's me. She was fixated on the diamond ring and the picture of the wedding bands we're planning on. After that, she went to meet up with one of her other rich friends. I was actually disappointed to see how she looks now. She's now in her mid-twenties, I know she smokes, and she started to look older than me. She gained weight in all the wrong places. She also has a large debt now. Instead of it humbling her, she's actually become an even bigger bitch. Her usual friends always seem to cuddle her when she has problems. I tend to scold her when it's her fault for being a moron, a bitch, or both. She wanted to be in the spotlight so bad that she completely ruined herself. Like those girls that used to put belladonna drops in their eyes and wound up blind. Her nonverbal communication was very telling as well. She never greeted my fiancé and she knows him, never mind not congratulating either of us. She didn't even make an excuse on why she hasn't contacted me when she got back. I didn't see the point in asking why since she kept ignoring me. The oddest thing about all of this is why did she actually talk to me in the first place? Why avoid me and then talk to me like nothing's wrong on the street? Why even bother with the weird nonverbal communication? If I had been her ex or something, I would understand. Shouldn't she be trying to land herself a guy instead of fighting with me? Even if she found a guy, I doubt that she would be grateful. It's getting sad to watch her carry on like this. Well, Fat Cat, thanks for yet another donation as well as topic. This one is really interesting. So let me get this straight. You destroy this woman financially and in your own words threw her off a financial cliff and now you're upset because you didn't get a response after wishing her a happy new year. It's quite obvious that this woman doesn't want to see you ever again. First you hurt her and then you wish her a happy new year and tell everyone here on YouTube how you're concerned about her looks deteriorating and how she looks to begin with. You're doing nothing but virtue signaling that you care for her after you destroyed her. It's getting sad for you watching her the way that she is, yet at the same time, you were the one that was partially to blame for her being like that. Is that possible, Fat Cat? If it is, then this is female duality at its worst. Women like you have sympathy for other women after the fact or after something bad happens, but you have no problems destroying her life in the first place. It's like me setting fire to some guy's house and then saying, isn't it sad that he has to live in a cardboard box and can't afford blankets for his children? I know you probably aren't the one directly responsible for her looks fading away. But if you stressed her out enough, that could actually have started her chain smoking like a chimney or doing drugs to cope with what happened in her life. Is that a possibility? You also felt the need to complain about the fact that she didn't congratulate you and your fiancé after you threw her off a financial cliff. Isn't it clear to you what's happening? She's avoiding you on social media, the phone, social gatherings, etc. And probably other people as well that she doesn't like. But she had no choice but to interact with you when she met you in person that day. What was she supposed to do? Hide behind a telephone pole a really fat person so you wouldn't see her and she could pretty much avoid talking to you. It was probably already too late. You made eye contact with her and she made eye contact with you and that was that. She had no choice. I'm sure that given the choice she would never speak to you ever again because in your words you threw her off a financial cliff. You were also the one that unfriended her on Facebook and she didn't do that to you. You probably didn't want the negative emotional baggage of being unfriended or blocked on Facebook so you did it first so you wouldn't have to feel rejection. I think that's what you were thinking subconsciously to yourself. She could have also seen that you unfriended her and she probably thought that you didn't like her anymore and didn't want to speak to her ever again. I've met women like you. You treat your family and friends poorly and wonder why no one wants to be your friend anymore. The reason I know this is because early on in high school I did the exact same thing without even realizing it. Word got around and then people didn't want to talk to me. No one took my side and basically told me, hey Sandman, you were a jerk because you did A, B, and C. They just left me to wander around on the early high school years wilderness all on my lonesome. But Miss Fat Cat, I find it cute and funny how you say you threw her off a cliff and no wonder why your friend is acting all strange. 
It's like you're an alien come to this planet. You flipped over some trucks and cars, and now you're wondering why people in them are getting upset. And that could have a lot to do with you being a rich kid and being raised like that and not having to deal with the consequences of people. You basically had enough money to fall back on so you didn't have to learn to socialize. It's hard for rich kids to empathize with the little people I find, especially while they're growing up. You get stuck in your own bubble that you don't even understand half the time when you're hurting other people. You don't have the ability to put yourself in their shoes because you've never been poor before. The poor also don't have the ability to put themselves in your shoes because they're poor. For me, the way I interpret your statements are that you sent me with regards to this donation is that they're attempts to vent at me and use me as an emotional tampon. As well, you're attempting to save face and hoping that men listening to what you have to say will say, Oh, poor fat cat. We have sympathy for her because her former friend she screwed over didn't wish her a happy engagement. Do you not see how narcissistic and self-centered your behavior is? You probably don't because you're in that wealthy fat cat bubble. I've been around plenty of wealthy people with millions if not tens of millions of dollars, and they can usually empathize with others, especially if they were poor to begin with. But their kids are usually disconnected from poverty or even slumming it as part of the middle class, so they don't know how to relate to people properly. That's what I believe is happening to you, fat cat. The only way you would ever actually experience and learn from others and how they feel is to have your wealth stripped away and for you to live an ordinary or below average lifestyle. I don't think that's going to happen, so just be aware that throughout your lifetime, you're going to have to deal with the same situation if you destroy the women that you come into contact with. My suggestion would be to go out and find some new wealthy female friends and see what happens. But with all your scars and your partial disability, that must also be very difficult because they probably won't accept you. So you're probably stuck in the middle without any real meaningful friendships. What you're also displaying, fat cat, is the woman is always the victim complex. Even when the woman does something to hurt someone else, she's still the victim. Every woman I believe does this because I believe it's a survival mechanism. You could have lit that girl's hair on fire for a Pepsi commercial and pushed her off the Titanic and it would have all been her fault. You'd probably just say, well, she's lucky because when she hit the water, her hair stopped burning. Then you'd come around with a lifeboat and wonder why she didn't take the life preserver out of your hands, which pretty much appears to be covered in kerosene. You tell her it's safe because the matches are in your pocket and you haven't lit them yet. Do you now finally see how funny your virtue signaling is after you stomped on this attractive woman? Maybe you did this because she was more attractive than you are. Maybe you get a thrill from keeping track of her to just see how terrible her life has become since you did what you did. You want to see the car crash of her life, but she probably feels ashamed and doesn't want to see herself lower down in front of you. Yet you still want to see what she's up to and you deleted her from Facebook when she didn't actually keep in touch and tell you how much her life stinked. If you're not careful, you're not going to know what the pleasure of having a real friendship in your life is. Because if you're destroying your so-called friends financially, then what are you doing to your enemies? I was thinking that people will just stop talking to you, but with all the money you say you have, you'll always be able to attract or pay for somebody's company because someone might actually try and swindle and rob you, or just use you for your food or a place to hang out. I hope you understand the situation a little bit better, Fat Cat, and I hope you realize that what you were doing wasn't all that kosher. You also made mention that she wanted to meet up with her other rich friend. So to me, this sounds like she too is a user trying to use rich people to help her get better in life. So you probably just use her to show off your fancy diamond ring and other toys and status items, and she probably hoped that some of that magic that you have would rub off on her. You probably also hung around with her because, as I said before, she was incredibly attractive in the past, but not so much anymore. So by having an attractive friend you hang around with, it allows you to have access to men that you wouldn't have access to normally. The more I think about this, the more I realize that you were both probably using each other in one way or the other. There are good-looking women with really bad attitudes using fat or unattractive wealthy women all the time. The unattractive woman spends the money that she typically gets from her parents or some kind of inheritance, and the good-looking one attracts the men of higher status. It's a mutual parasitic relationship. I wonder if that's what you had going, Miss Fat Cat. You were Garfield and she was Odie. Maybe you can clarify that in the comments section down below. I'm sure that everyone wants to know. And just so that everyone knows, Fat Cat actually posts in the comments under a false name, but I can't exactly remember what it is right now. So to all the guys listening, you might have actually been interacting with her Meownificence without even realizing it. Maybe she will finally be kind enough to post down below who she is and get the attention of a lifetime. Although I'm betting that it won't be all that positive. I think you have a lot to learn, Miss Fat Cat, and need to empathize more with others, but I don't know how realistic and practical that is with all your bling bling and dollar bills. You're stuck in a paradox where you're trying to virtue signal, but at the same time, you don't understand why people on YouTube and in real life don't recognize your virtue signaling as genuine, and it probably confuses you. You should have stayed friends with that woman on Facebook because the odds are pretty high that she had other stuff going on in her life and was just simply too busy to talk to you. 
Just because she might have been busy with other stuff doesn't mean that she was specifically ignoring you. Anyways, that's all I've got to say for today. Thanks again, Fat Cat the Meownificent, for your donation as well as your topic. Don't forget to smash the like button like the poor people that you smash over the head, bang the bell, and check out the MGTOW mystery link. As for everyone else out there, besides staying away from the wrath of Fat Cat, please follow me on Twitter or like me on Facebook to get tomorrow's video today. But wait, there's more. If you want to get the video for the day after tomorrow, then subscribe to me on Minds.com using Sandman MGTOW, all one word. Thanks for taking your daily dose of red pills. And remember, a red pill a day keeps the spoiled sex kittens away. So enjoy the rest of your day, and cheers.